inside of you. We have a Kohen, we have a Levite, and we have an Israelite inside of us. You get called to go up to the Torah, you go. You stand in your holiness, you stand in your priestness, you stand in who you are. Don't get separate. Don't let the nege that tells you you're different rot you away and keep you from shul. Mm. It is so wonderful to talk to you again. Uh, remember RabbiJenny.tv. We will see you next Wednesday. Have a beautiful and blessed day. You have been listening and lighting up your life with Rabbi Jenny. Join us next week for another session of love, light, and joy as Rabbi Jenny takes life to the next level. Are you ready? Rabbi Jenny says the time is now. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Listen Sundays at noon for Be a Catholic with topics like the high horse of morality, Catholicism, on AM 1470, WNN. This is Talk 1470, Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Lights in the Night Show with Russell Johnson, who wants to talk about and reveal what the United States government doesn't want you to know about UFOs and aliens right here in this country and around the globe. Russell has been following this material for over 50 years, and we'll have guests who will tell their stories from around the world. Take down the number to call in, 888-565-1470, because Russell wants to hear your story. Our show also invites you to send your pictures and videos to UFO at amp2.tv so we can show them on our program at lightsinthenight.tv. Now let's get to the lights in the night subject matter and hear what the government has tried to keep quiet for over 50 years. Again, get ready to call 888-565-1470 and watch on lightsinthenight.tv. Now, here's Russell with today's show. Hi there, Russ Johnson here with Sarah, and we will be talking about Lights in the Night. It's a relatively new program, but it is new. This is our what, maiden voyage, if you will. And so we want to uncover some of the mysteries out there, UFOs, crop circles, abductions, and all, you know, on and on, and a thousand different subjects. And so I've been doing it for a couple of years, years and years ago, but I'll get to that in a minute. I have Sarah with me, and she's co-hosting. Sarah, why are you here with this subject matter? Uh, well, I've just <laughs> recently started to uh, learn a little bit more about this, and uh -huh. uh, just there's so much um, that you hear online and just on different news sources, but mm. there's nothing really at all in the mainstream media about this topic. So I think that uh, I'm here to get a little more insight. Okay, good, good, good. Well, years ago, about 25 years ago, I was doing a program on the American Radio Networks, covering about 30 stations across the country. And with, and at the time, I was interviewing some real sharp people like Colonel Stevens and uh, Stanton Friedman, Bob Exler, robotics expert, and other people, and even George Green, who had, the at that time, the American West Publishing Company. And he was doing a lot of research and had a lot of books. And so... Uh, Guess what? Who we have today? We have George Green. <laughs> well, wonderful! I can't wait to hear a little bit more about George Green. Yeah, he's been traveling all over the world for the last forty years studying the subject. So why don't you introduce George Green? He's, I think he's standing by. I think. By. I think. Uh, right, can we right. get George Green on the phone? Yeah. You got me on the phone now. Oh, wonderful, George! Well, yeah. Russell talks about you all the time. So, uh, can you give us a little bit of your background and tell us how you got into this field? Well, uh, frankly, uh, uh, when I joined the Air Force, the first thing they did was assign me to electronics school. And then my first assignment was Edwards Air Force Base, which is out in the Mojave Desert in California. 
um, one morning I did the post-fly inspection on the, X, the X-15. That's the forerunner of the space shuttle. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it lands out uh, basically in the dry bed. Uh, Edwards has the largest runway in the world. It's 22 miles long. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I went out and I did the inspection, but it was 10 o'clock in the morning, and they just, they just don't let you work when it's over 100 degrees, and yeah. <laughs> which it was. It was last week in August. Uh, at Edwards, so but I had a jeep, and I, if I, unless I put twenty five miles on the crazy thing, they'd take it away from me. And I said, well, wait a minute, I got enough time. There's a couple hangars I hadn't been into. Now I was cleared for top secret. So anyway, I goes into one of the hangars, and there's this big round disc, uh, silver in color, yeah, and very unusual. But I've been working on a lot of strange equipment when I was out there because that's the test center. That's where all the civilian contractors build the vehicles in the Air Force test them. Well, anyway, I'm looking at this thing, and I, so I, I went back to my squadron commander, and I said, when can I work on that round craft? And he says, you saw it? I said, yeah. And he said, well, it's an ion-powered craft designed by Sikorsky for use in outer space. Now, this is in 1958, just so you know. Wow. I says, well, great. When can I work on it? And he says, you can't. It's still a civilian project. So I said, okay, say la vie, right? So anyway, I went back to uh, to my room. Anyway, mm-hmm. I happened to be running around with a base photographer, and I said, hey, get me some pictures of the round craft. And he said, what'd they tell you? And I gave him the story, and he says, come on with me. So I went over to the photo lab, and he showed me pictures of the spacecraft. Now, I'm 10 feet away from it, but the two dead aliens got my attention. Now, I'm fi- I didn't see the aliens. I saw their pictures. I, I did see the physical craft. Mm-hmm. Wow. It so, was on the premises so then, there. Now I'm a little mad because of my clearance. Why did my commander lie to me? So I went back and confronted him. And he said, look, when the government's ready to tell the truth about UFOs and ETs, they will. Until then, you stick to your story. And he said, next weekend is Armed Forces Day. We'll open up the base. Maybe they can come in. And he says, if, they would, if somebody would happen to see that craft, I'm supposed to give them the ion-powered craft stuff. I said, fine. Now, you have to understand what happened in 1958. Now, the year before, everybody had uh, tube radios. I don't know if you remember that time, Russell. I do, everybody indeed. I was in the Air Force, right? too. Well, well I went th- the first thing they assigned me to is all these craft with all the digital stuff in it. Now we had transistors and all that. It mm-hmm. came right off of alien spacecraft. All this stuff has been transistorized or, you know, or changed from the alien stuff. Anyway, uh, within a month, I was transferred off the base because I, I knew too much. Wow. Anyway, so that's, that's I about... ended up, uh, I won't go in too much more than that, other than I was reassigned in, into uh, uh, where they put me into the, as a guidance technician for the Hound Dog nu- nuclear missile. So for the next two years, I was in the nuclear program. Every time I turned around, I was involved with things that were top secret or something that, you know, that just happened. Wow, George. Anyway, so your uh, your experience happened about 10 years after the Roswell incident, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? What was the deal with the, well, Roswell, the Roswell crash? Well, was just one of the things that they were trying to discredit. Actually, there was another crash about three weeks before that of one of the craft. Down in New Mexico, we were experimenting with a lot of uh, stuff down, you know, out of Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of electronic frequencies and things, and the ETs are coming down. And then I think, Russell, you were talking about the grays. That's where they kind of migrated down mm-hmm. there. And they were sharing some of the information with our government. But anyway, before that, there was another craft that was uh, actually crashed into Mexico, and our military uh, went over with the, the, you know, and drug the crazy craft across the border and brought it back down. So most of the crash crash, and there's 18 different crashes that occurred in New Mexico. Most of the craft ended up in Wright Patterson Air, you know, airfield. Well, the real serious things happened. You know, I didn't say anything more about the stuff. I just knew that we had a lot of secrets because I've been working on them. Anyway, I got out of the Air Force. I went to Colorado School of Mines. I majored in geophysics. I studied law and business at the U of I. In 1984, I built a house in Aspen, and my housekeeper had this book, UFO Contact from the Pleiades, incredible color photographs of exactly the same thing I saw 25 years before. That got my attention. And now at that time, I was in banking and real estate development. I built in 22 states. I had my own bank. I had all kinds of crazy things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, at this minute, I said, wait a minute. Why doesn't the world come forth with the rest of it? They got movies going on, you know, like Star Trek and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. That they make people think that it's not going on. The truth is, it's unbelievable. 
that uh, when I uh, what happened on this book is I looked at these pictures and I said I'm gonna go, I got to get more of these things to give them out to the people because I know they're real. So I flew down and I talked to this couple. They said they were investigating a man in Switzerland who, by the name of Billy Meyer, who claimed to be in contact with beings from the star system, the Pleiades, who said that they engineered this planet. In other words, these looked at all the stuff on what the planet is for 500 million people. Well, I just took that in my head and went on, okay, so the planet's for 500 million people. Well, if you study any science on the planet, you know that there's only so much we can have, like... Uh, it, it, we just can't sustain the planet size on it. I also found out, with reading all the information about it, that our moon is an artificial satellite. And planet Earth is basically, if you want to call it, a prison planet of the universe. There's all kinds of extraterrestrials visiting us. And I be became in contact with several different ones. And it's amazing what we're all similar in looking, maybe different colors, because we come from different star systems. Anyway, the amalgamation of this thing, because of our learning curve, or how we think, is that we they were yeah. hoping we would intermix and build ourselves up and come into balance within the laws of the universe. Now, the, uh -huh. there's four basic we laws can't get of on the phone. universe. Okay. Hey, George. George, I'm going to interrupt you for a second, because we must have hit a hot-button topic here. We have a lot of people um, calling in here, so if uh, anyone wants to call in for questions... Good. Um, Either try you can try and give us a call or get online. Um, I think our website is lightsinthenight.tv, and we have a chat room up and running. Uh -huh. You can um, get get us on there, and Freddie will pass us in your questions, well, and we can read them out loud. Well, here. Let's get the phone number eight 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 five six five fourteen seventy. That's eight 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 five. Only to give stories. Only to give stories, yeah. or ask a question. Can yes. they? Okay, that's eight 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 five six five fourteen seventy. Hey, George. Like, there may be some people calling and they have some questions of you. Uh, I'll let's, be glad let, to answer any of them. Okay, let's talk about the Roswell just a bit because I want to go to um, look at the, the Montauk, uh, the Philadelphia experiment. You remember that? Sure. Okay, right. Let's talk about Roswell just a wee bit because we time is running fast here. You were saying that there were some aliens who were in the crash and that some of them were dead, and a few of them were alive, and they took those, where did they take those alive ones? To Wright Patterson. Wright Patterson Air Force Base. And so, That's correct. How long did they live after they were, after they were in capture? Uh, Russ, I don't have the details on the length of that. Uh, Wendell, Wendell Stevens, as you know, the retired right, colonel right. in the Air Force, had more of that stuff. Now, uh, Wendell died, but I have all of his research right now. So a lot of this material, I because I helped finance all of his books he published, you know, as he ran around. Did he have about 30 uh, books? Was it 30? My last count that he had written about the... Yeah, roughly 30, yeah, 30 books. Uh, you know, so if people, but, want, just, if people want to get some of that material... You have a website. Why don't you give me a website? Because we won't be able to cover all the stuff that we were talking about. Okay. What is no, your website? No hoax. N o h o a x dot com. No hoax dot okay. com. Or my name is George Green. Just Google me, or I'm on, or YouTube me. I'm everywhere. You can see some of the, you can see some of the craft and everything else on my site. So you've been traveling all over the world researching just this subject. Okay. So the Roswell deal was. In essence, but there's still a lot of discussion and disinformation about Roswell, yes or no? Yes, but okay. they always do that because uh -huh. how do you discredit something when they can't explain it and the government wants to keep it secret? Mm -hmm. What is the consensus of people in the know? Time, that was, remember, that all happened right after World War II, and the people really don't know that Hitler was involved with the ETs and he had a craft that he was flying. So it was a real different deal. In fact, he, uh, the Germans themselves, you know, the, you know when the first nuclear bomb exploded, don't you? Uh, Hi we may have Hiroshima, talked about that before. Nagasaki. Or are you talking about that area? No, 19, 1908. Okay, that was, was a, that was in the. That uh, was in Tagungsta, Siberia, and the, but the uh, the uh, the Germans built that and set it off. At the end of World War II, we took out, you know, we took half of the Russian scientists. The, um, if you look at it, the Russian scientists got, uh, we got, they went to Russia, and we got Werner von Braun and crew, and then we started doing nuclear testing in New Mexico, and oh, the nuclear okay. testing we started to do down there, which was unusual because the guy, I had one of my friends was in charge of the project underneath, 
uh, we started doing this stuff after the war was going on, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We didn't even have the technology. Sure. George, I just have a quick question for you going back to Roswell incident. Um, so among people who research uh, this kind of information, is there a consensus or even among people that are in the know, is there a split of like as to whether it was real or if it was a hoax or what is the consensus there? <laughs> No, the consensus that it was real. In fact, the government's coming forth with some of the information. Some of our wow. um, astronauts are talking. Well, one of my friends was a close astronaut. Actually, uh, he was scheduled to go to Mars on rest of them, and his buddy was Buzz Aldrin. We never went to the moon at the time. Like when they supposedly went up to the moon, it didn't happen. We've done it since then, but not since not during the time where they were you know, programming people to go out there. I mean, the moon itself, figure this. If you have a round object and it's spinning like planet Earth, take a look at the moon. The moon doesn't spin. It was an artifact. It was actually uh, an object that came through space that the ETs put on top of it so we could have, if you want to look at it, uh, um, climate changes and everything else. Oh, so things but that are happening. Basically, George, George, we want to get to another subject. We uh, have before we on. get too far off of that subject, uh, yeah. Mr. Green, we got a chat question in from Geo from Orlando. When you and Russell were talking about the nuclear testing, Geo wants to know why is the nuclear testing now stopped that you guys were speaking about? Well, uh, my son happened to be a nuclear physicist, and he just spent three and a half years in the secret cities in Russia, and he come back and he says, Dad, they're going to shut down the NASA program, and they're going to shut down our nuclear stuff, because Russia is about 12 years ahead of us on all of that stuff. Okay. In fact, if you know, if you remember, Russia sent up their... Uh, their vehicles up to the space ship to bring mm -hmm. our people them food and stuff. We just quit all that stuff. So we're just stopping because we're so far behind in this arena? Exactly. That, okay. uh, exactly. Now, because of the government implication, I wanted to know more about that. Well, I used to run around with the guys that are planning on taking over the world. So I know what their plans are. I sat with them. Uh, I became very powerful. And uh, and I got to a game, though, where I just refused to continue on because I couldn't uh, it didn't. Uh, I just didn't believe in what they got planning. I did check it all out, and then, you know, from a scientific standpoint, it makes total sense. It's okay. like so right what, now, you and I are talking. There's two hundred and fifty thousand new people being born on the planet. George, Over quick the question. Fifty thousand S. George, quick question. So you say, are you talking about the Illuminati or the Bilderbergers or the Trilateral Commission? Are you talking about those kind of persons who want to say... Yes, those, those kind of people. Okay. Well, there's a Bilderberg right, meeting right, going right. on in Switzerland right, right now, as you know. This is on the money game. Okay, because, let's, let's move... You know, and I was involved with all that. So we, you know, about, I have to understand there they aren't necessarily secret. They're just more powerful. They get in a position of it, and they look at us as, frankly, expendable containers or useless eaters. Okay. All right. Let's briefly talk about Montauk, the Philadelphia experiment. I think that was 1942, somewhere What in the that. heck is Montauk? Right. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. I have never even heard of that. See, a lot of these I've heard about Roswell and mm -hmm. the incidents with President Eisenhower, but I've never heard anything about the Montauk project. Okay, briefly, let's talk about Montauk. Let's talk about the Philadelphia experiment because both of them are the same. Is that okay. right? That's exactly right. Okay. That, that's because when they were involved with some of the technology that they got off from the extraterrestrials on time travel. And then they actually were trying to change the dimension on, on the ship, if you, if you remember, moving it over into this experiment. And there's a lot of books on it. I, I didn't go any farther with it because I was sitting with the people who were playing with that. No, they're doing that today. I mean, eat, how do you think, uh, like the Pleiadians go from here to the Pleiades, which is, you know, like 500 light years away, takes them about eight hours. How do you think they do that? They convert everything. And I have pictures of this and photos and stuff, and they be on my website, where you can see the craft becoming invisible. They change it into uh, a different wavelength, not the same as our, our light waves that you and I normally say, but there's many waves in the light. As you know, you've got infrared and all these different spectrums, but you have different areas of stuff where they actually change dimensions. So and is the Montauk time, Project just, time traveling, or...? Exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. But we have that technology. The Russians are way ahead of us on that technology. And frankly, uh, it's when you get into it, uh, you say, "Why doesn't people do uh, you know do things about it?" Well, they are, and they're and they're happening all over the place. My question is, why a is lot this of stuff that's happening? Why is this kept from us? Why isn't this in the mainstream media? 
uh, who runs this country, the big corporations? Why would General Electric let you do that? You know, the government right now is putting in things so they do not want any, as you know, coal or any of the natural things that are like burning wood or any of this kind of stuff in the next 10 years. They want to have it all by year 2025 that we're offline. Right. Well, me, that's George. all control. Why General Electric can't make any money doing that, right? George, or people me, doing making light bulbs. Look at the new light bulbs. They're all LEDs, right? Right. Okay. They don't. Hey. They don't take a lot of energy to run. This, the, the technology's been out here for fifty years. The trouble is, it's a game of money. How do I make money off of everything? And I have another friend of mine who has a, a motor that's been running twenty years without any connection. All right. Hey, let me it's do this. Let me quick magnets. question. You talked about the Pleiades. We talked about the Greys. We talked about the reptilians. How many different well, species? There's a lot of, uh, yeah, I talk a lot about different ones. The, the Greys, uh, were, it's an interesting group. That's the short Greys, if you want to call it. Uh, they were, their base is in New Mexico right now, and they interact with our government. Are these different species of aliens that you guys are talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, let's put it this way. If you take somebody that's Spanish, you take somebody that's Chinese, or somebody that's, uh, uh, for instance, the Basque, you know, between France and Spain. Mm -hmm. Aren't they, these are all humans, right? But they may be different colors or different whatever. They come from different star systems. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So we we look at it. There are some extraterrestrials that look different, like the ones from Iarga. Now, they're, they're facial street. But most of the people on this planet, we look alike or have facial you know, uh, that look like that. Yeah. Uh, you go to China, they have all kinds of, uh, you go to Xi'an and look at all of the terracotta figures and look at all of the other stuff, and they have pyramids over there. Okay. So that, uh, it's a game that's going on. How do you keep people uh, dumb, dumb, so to speak? You know, history, I tell people history is two words. One of the quick subjects. Okay, we are f going fast, 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 and I just want to, Thank everyone who happens to be online. If you have any questions of us, yeah. give us a One call. One more time, we'll give you our uh, our number is 888-565-1470. Right. Right. And we've already gotten one chat question in on our website. We have up and running now, lightsinthenight.tv. We've got a right. chat room up and running. If you, uh, I think we've got a few more minutes on the air here. If you want to shoot a question in, and we'll read it out on the air for either Russell or George. Okay. And George, let's take a, a final subject. I think we're running out of time. The half an hour should be three hours because you love to talk and you, you have a lot of information that I would teach you. <laughs> but uh, President Eisenhower, he met with the alien, it is said that he met with some alien beings about 1952 at Holloman Air Force Base. Is that right or wrong? Uh, actually, he met him at Edwards Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, they, we had, they actually had pictures of them. They come out, the ET stopped there, but the, uh, he may have met him in a couple other places. Maybe there's different groups who are trying to interact with our leaders all over. Uh -huh. So, uh, But that was at a period of time before we stepped up with this technology, and nuclear is a no-no in the universe, so uh, it's a real bad deal. What was the discussion? Uh, have, do you, have you discerned what they were talking about, what deals that were made, if any deals at all, and why did mm -hmm. he come forward as President of the United States to say, in fact, that they were here and they are entities from other places visiting the uh, this world. Why, why didn't he do well, that? Well, the statement you said, Russell, is exactly true. The trouble is, when you go to that, what there is no deal when you're talking about things. Like, there's no signed contract. Because like me, when I made an agreement with the extraterrestrials to publish their material, I said, you got my word, and if that's not any good, nothing is. Now, people go to my website, nohoax.com, read the handbook for the new paradigm. Uh, uh, oh. The authors are extraterrestrials that are trying to wake us up. Okay. And are you are saying books, you are contacting us? Are you saying. You raised some flags here in the studio. Right. Are, are you, you a, saying you're not an alien? You, have you been abducted? George? No. No, okay. But are so, you a medium of sorts? No, no, he said he's a contactee. He said they called him. So they're in contact with you. Is that what I'm understanding, George? That's right. Okay. And what did they say and how did you meet with them? Well, I met with him when I was with Billy Meyer because I was over there trying to get you know help him get his information out because he was be when I was over there. Uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures of mm -hmm. his, you know the wedding cake stuff that was from people from the planet Umo. Well, at that time, I took some of the pictures also that they have on the internet. You know, show the holes in the tree and all that. Well, there when I'm talking with Billy, 
you know, he didn't want to do anything with us. I, I, because he said all Americans were crooks. They come over and we get all the information from, I mean, I got thousands of pages of the information and technical stuff from the extraterrestrials on how it works, energy, the whole, whole game. Okay. And a little bit more about this universe and questions? how planet Earth yeah, is and what, what's coming up. Okay. That's you, the, that's the portion that you and I should be talking in future times. Absolutely. Maybe next week. Hey, but, but this week, I just want to finish up on this. I think we have about, about five minutes left. Time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> Seven minutes left. Listen, so we want to thank uh, anybody who's listening from the Hollow Earth Network. Somebody might want to Google and see who they are. The Hollow Earth Network, and they have a conference called uh, once a week, 2,000 people on the call or somewhere in that vicinity. And then there's another group, Dr. Uh, R.C., W.C., if you will, and she has what the Truth, um, call, the call Truth, well, call Truth Network or something like that. So it's a lot of people out there having a lot of discussions and a lot of dialogue, and I'll get that before we go. Did you have another question, Sarah? Um, I was just, mm -hmm. it, not to backtrack too much, but mm -hmm. when you uh, asked about President Eisenhower meeting with at the Holomon mm -hmm. base, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see, I had heard that, I, I've heard of the Edwards base meeting, but also I've heard that the Holomon meeting was even more documented than the Edwards base meeting, so I don't know if you wanted to shed any quick insight on that. or. Do you have any information on that, George? No, but there is documents for people. But the trouble is, you can start re when you start researching that thing, just like yourself. Uh, there are hundreds of books written about extraterrestrials right now. Mm -hmm. You got you know, Wendell was the one that I helped finance his books, frankly, because he was more. Uh, well, I followed up on him. Uh, it was a period of time where I flew around the world myself to check out his contacts. I'm sitting in Spain with Antonio Rivera, who was in contact with the people from UMO. And there was many groups over in Spain that were in direct contact. They had, you know, they lived with them. So it was a question of happening. How do you get the information out to people and say, hey, I'm an ET? Well, you got to look to yourself and look at your history. We're all ETs. How does this I documentation mean, manifest itself? Like, is it, is it just through direct contact, or is there ever any, um, any actual physical documentation, or what, what's, what does oh, that sure. look like? Oh, there's a lot of, no, there's a lot of physical things, and a lot of people have pictures of them. I mean, but, you know, standing there, you can, it, it, that's just what happens. It depends on the ETs and what their mission is about. Now, the ETs are not here to save us. They said that's the biggest thing you're looking for. We're not. They will give us information so we can save ourselves. And, yep. you, you know, again, we don't have enough time to go into more details on that, but it's, it's a whole change of of what I call thought processes. Okay. I mean, I, I, I said at the Population Institute in Washington, D.C., analyzing all the details that are coming in there. It's about five blocks north of the White House. Right. And they're looking at what's going on. We have, according to the ETs, we have 8.3 billion people on the planet right now. Okay. George, one question. You said that you have a contract with the ETs. The Palladians? Who, who do you have? No. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm back up to a higher level. The contact... Okay, fine, fine. Then you have met with them. You had you have sat with them. You are in conversation. I, yeah, yes. I, I'm their publisher, believe it or not. Okay, fine. Because I've agreed to publish their information. I didn't like. I read the handbook. I didn't write it. Okay, and that's on your website for people who want to get it. it. Is that right? Explain who the authors are on page thirty and thirty-one, and that's a free download on my website, nohoax.com. Okay, so why isn't the government involved? in your contacts with the, they would love to be involved in that, the CIA, FBI, Child or Lateral Commission. Uh, I have a lot of my friends that are all those three-letter agencies that you're talking about. They got enough troubles to take care of the political game that's going on on the planet. Mm -hmm. And our government, the ones that are directly involved, they know all about this stuff, but they're not going to let the people know that there's something out. Oh, why? People don't why? Take on why? Why? Let me ask why. Why? Why won't they let us know why? Well, they do by you putting it out in the information out there, but they're not going to give you the information because they are controlled by the people with the money behind the money, and the money doesn't want is controlling certain mechan you know mechanical things that we're operating with, or okay. uh, whatever devices they're running, and that that's all controlled by money. Well, if the ETs are offering stuff and there's no money, and everybody's you know the greed. I'm going to run out and patent it or do something else. Okay, it doesn't work that way. We have about two minutes left. That's it. Mm -hmm. One minute. Yeah, left. we've got to. Okay. Just about. So you got to wrap it up. George, yep. hey, listen, it's a pleasure, privilege, and an honor to be talking to you again. 
you have a lot of wealth of information and I'll get back to you maybe in the future we yeah. have a program next week or the following Absolutely. week when we have you back in. Thanks so much for joining and us. And thanks for being here. And thank you everybody for joining us on our maiden voyage of lights in the night. Right. And the number, the website? Our number is 888-565-1470 to call in But um, and we have our website up and running, lightsinthenight.tv. Thank you guys for turning, uh, tuning in today. Hey, thank you very much for being with us and next time, more information. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching the Lights in the Night show with Russell Johnson. Today's show can be seen on lightsinthenight.tv. And remember to send your pictures and videos to UFO at amp2.tv. And perhaps they will be used on the show. Join us next week as we bring you more information on UFO sightings and aliens that your government doesn't want you to know about. Keep the information flowing and we will see you next week on the Lights in the Night show with Russell Johnson. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.